the intricate rituals in the animal kingdom, none is more varied or more crucial than courtship. We call it the mating game, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reproduction. But among non-human animals, the sole purpose of courtship is to produce offspring. In a moment, we'll see how some wild animals go about landing a partner. Like the South American Nandu, most animals have some way of advertising for a partner. When ready to mate, the male spreads his wings and struts about, the signal the females recognize. For only courting males show their feathers in just this way. The male peacock also displays his magnificent plumage and utters a special call to attract the female. As with most other non-human animals, the male is the more conspicuously decorated, the cock of the walk. Making himself as large and impressive as possible, each male tries to outshine his rivals. Then issuing an unmistakable invitation to mate, he vibrates his plumage. Among gray geese, rhythmic head dipping signals the mating urge. Head dipping, feather fanning, strutting, calling. Each species has its own means of friendly persuasion of finding the right partner. At the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, the courting techniques of a smaller creature are under study, the fruit fly. To prevent them from mating until their courtship can be observed, Biologist Dr. Aubrey Manning lightly anesthetizes the flies and sorts them according to sex. Because fruit flies are so common in rotten fruit, it shouldn't be difficult for them to find a partner. But it has to be the right one, a fruit fly of the same species. To see how they get together, Dr. Manning places a male and a female in a small dish. A male will follow any female that looks even remotely like a member of his species. Now and then, the male vibrates his wings, a sound we can hear through strong amplification. With this particular song, the male introduces himself to the female and makes his intentions known. In this species, it's the female who decides whether mating will take place. From the male's movements, his song, and the frequency of his wing vibrations, she determines whether he's a member of her own species. If she receives the right signals, she allows him to mate. In this case, the mating song and dance were clearly successful. Not all animals have such clear-cut messages as the fruit flies. Male frogs advertise for a partner by croaking. Since males and females return to the pond where they first hatched, his problem isn't finding a female of his own species, but finding one that will mate with him. He does this in a curiously haphazard way, leaping onto anything that moves. And often as not, it's another male who gives a special croak of protest and kicks him off, a signal he's made a mistake. It's a matter of pure luck when he finds a frog that doesn't shake him off. Only then does he know he's landed on a female. Their courtship and mating have nothing to do with romance or pleasure. It's pure instinct, an animal drive for survival built into the species. Sometime later, the female lays long streamers of eggs, which the male fertilizes as soon as they appear. For procreation is the goal of animal courtship. Like frogs, newts, 
a species of salamander also mate in water with a somewhat unusual technique. Flashing his courting colors, the male tries to attract the female with this energetic tail quivering display. same time, he gives off a special scent. Only if his looks, behavior, and smell are exactly right will the female accept it. gets his message across successfully, the female follows it. He lifts his tail and sets a small white packet on the ground. It contains his sperm, which she must pick up with the opening in her tail end. But in this case, she fails to do so. The male tries again. Now he's got two females interested. Once more he deposits his sperm packet. This time a female is in exactly the right position and the transfer works. To us, this delivery and pickup system of mating seems impersonal but it makes up the whole relationship between male and female newts. The male leaves returning to land, for newts live in water only as larvae and during the mating season. Alone, the female looks for a suitable plant on which to lay her eggs. She lays about 50, using a special secretion to glue every single egg to a leaf, which she then folds over. After she's finished laying her eggs, she too will leave, and the young will hatch by themselves. For courtship and mating, while leading to offspring, do not necessarily result in families. The visual signals that work for a newt in water would not be successful in this meadow, a dense jungle to a grasshopper. Here the chances of male and female seeing each other are small. So to get attention, the male sings a raspy song by scraping together special organs on the back. When a female answers, the male zeroes in on her song. When he's close enough, the male, the smaller of the two, sings another song. This one identifies his species and lets her know whether he's an eligible mate. Only grasshoppers of this particular species sing this song, and only females of this species find it attractive. What he lacks in size, he makes up for in volume, repeating his courting serenade until he's accepted. So like fruit flies, grasshoppers advertise their mating urge with a special song that brings male and female together. As with most other land animals, the male has to deposit his sperm inside the female's body in order to fertilize the eggs. At
After mating, the female digs a hole in the sand where she lays her eggs. Then she covers them with a secretion that hardens, protecting them until they hatch the following spring. Far from the grasshopper's meadow, a male coral fish searches for a mate on a reef in the Red Sea. Swimming nearby is Dr. Hans Walter Fricke. His interest, the courtship of coral fish. Normally, males and females live together in a shoal. But during the mating season, the males leave and go off to prepare suitable places for the females to lay their eggs. When the male has found a nesting place, he returns to the shoal and tries to attract the female through body movements. As this one is ready to spawn, she follows him to the nesting site. Quivering his body near hers, he induces her to lay her eggs, about 100,000 of them. But she won't lay all of them here. There are, after all, other fish in the sea, and she returns to the shoal to await the next male that attracts her. The male, too, shares his nest with several females and fertilizes each batch of eggs separately. To prevent her eggs from being swept away by the current, a female sticks them on a stone before returning to the shoal. After tending the eggs for about three days, the male, too, returns. But a week later, the next courting period begins, continuing the cycle of mating and reproduction that enables these fish to survive in the competitive environment of a coral reef. Far from the Red Sea, in the streams of Europe and America, lives the fierce and aggressive little bullhead. Inside the entrance to his cave, the male keeps guard. During the mating season, male bullheads seek out these nest holes and defend them with all their strength. Lurking in his territory, each bullhead keeps a close watch on his rivals. He threatens any fish nearby, and if one comes too close, he grabs it. He seems to be involved in constant warfare. During courtship, the female is much paler than the male. In this season, he becomes black, a clear signal to the female who swims around searching for a mate. Furiously threatening everyone in his neighborhood, including the female, the male's courting tactics are very simple. He just grabs her by the head and drags her inside. It may be his aggressiveness that attracts the female. Later, his fighting urge will be directed at predators, and in so doing, he will help to protect the eggs and young. Quickly, the female lays her eggs and the male fertilizes them. Once this is done, she leaves the nest. Alone, the male stays behind to guard and tend the eggs. Soon, the young bullheads hatch. For them, the male's territory, not the female's, has been a safe nursery. Among the impalas of East Africa, neither courtship nor mating can occur until the males have established territories with clearly defined but invisible boundaries. Only those bucks who are strong enough and fast enough to win and defend the plot of ground will get a chance to mate.
Once a buck has become a landowner, he gathers into his herd any females who wander into his territory. It isn't easy for him to keep his harem together, for the females are not bound to him in any way. All they want is green pasture, and they may move on to a neighbor's territory. Even if the buck is successful in collecting a herd, he must constantly drive off invaders, other males who try to get close to his females. After he has driven off all rivals, the landowner looks for a female with whom he can mate. He relies on his sense of smell. Females ready to mate give off a particular odor which the buck recognizes. Following her around, he gently nudges her until she accepts it. Although it may seem unrelated, territoriality plays an important role in the survival of the species. For this system determines which males possess superior strength and fitness, qualities that will be passed on to future generations. Like impala males, the black grouse males of Eurasia also defend territories, not for the purpose of collecting a harem, but to compete for the attention of individual females. In the spring dawn, the male black grouse take up their stations on the communal display ground and crow defiantly at their neighbors. Each male tries to get the largest possible territory for himself, preferably in the middle of the display ground. By threats, each tries to drive the other towards the edge of the arena. When neither gives way, they fight. Only the strongest and most experienced males win a place near the center of the area. There the victors ensure themselves of getting the most females. Springing into the air, a male tries to attract the attention of any females coming into the courting grounds. The same gesture also serves warning to his neighbors to stay off. Like the females of most other species, the female grouse is plainer than the male. He has to be conspicuous to attract the mate and to frighten off intruders. But the female has a different function, and her dull coloration will serve as protective camouflage while she incubates her eggs and rears the young. Wandering from one male to the next, the female grouse is choosy. Usually, she ignores those males that have been driven to the periphery of the courting ground and heads straight for the center, to the territories owned by the strongest males. And they put on an energetic show to get her attention. quick mating. Just two seconds. The courting ritual is leisurely. After mating, the female goes off by herself, searching for a place to lay her eggs. Unlike grouse, male and female of many bird species remain together to care for their young. Gulls, for instance, live in large flocks and breed in nesting colonies. But they are also cannibals and will rob each other's nests to eat both eggs and young. So it's vital that the chicks are reared by both parents. When one flies off to hunt for food, the other stays behind to guard the nest. 
Among gulls, courtship is a complex ritual. Step by step, the female overcomes the male's aggressiveness by submissive behavior. union between them has been established, they signal to each other with head movements. It's time to build a nest and to mate. From their lengthy courtship, a lifelong partnership develops, one that is the basis of the gull's social order. Pigeons, too, live in pairs. As with other animals, courtship means a little more than just a step towards mating. For pigeons, courtship is also the decisive link in a chain of behavior pattern. Without courtship, the pigeon cannot build a nest or lay its eggs. The courting ceremony, a highly visible ritual, triggers an intricate body chemistry that brings about this behavior. Through such complex interactions, the partners synchronize each other's breeding cycles. Among pigeons, courtship establishes the strong personal bond between male and female that is necessary for the successful raising of the young. For all animals, courtship is a means of finding a partner and of persuading that partner to mate. But sometimes courtship is the means to an additional end, a lasting relationship, and the creation of a family.